OK, here we're asked to solve a trigonometric equation. So this one's linear. The first step is to isolate that trig function, sine x. To do that, well, we'll go ahead and subtract 1 on both sides. And that'll leave us with 2 sine x equals negative 1. Next, dividing by 2, we have sine x equals negative 1 half. Now, once we get the trig function isolated, we need to figure out where does sine, or where is sine negative? OK, so to figure that out, let's look at the unit circle. So on the unit circle, we know sine is negative over here in Q3 and Q4. So we're going to work through the reference angle theorem. If I want this angle here, x, what I can do is find this reference angle and then work from there. OK, so to find that reference angle, we can look at sine of x hat, that's the reference angle, equals the absolute value of that ratio, which is x hat is equal to sine inverse of 1 half. OK, so now we know then sine inverse of 1 half is 30 degrees. That's going to be our reference angle. OK, so to get um, the angle here x, what we're going to do is take 180 degrees plus the reference angle. All right, so the Q3 answer, well, we're going to have a Q3 answer and a Q4 answer. In Q3, we're going to be looking at 180 degrees plus the reference angle. Now, in this case, we have 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, which is 210 degrees. OK, so if you take 210 degrees, plug it into the original, you'll see that you get out 0. It works. Now, let's look at the angle in Q4. Now, the angle in Q4 here is the x, where the reference angle is here. OK, so in Q4, the calculation is a little different to get the, the actual angle x. In that case, we'll take 360 degrees, right, all the way around one revolution. Then we'll subtract out the reference angle. OK, so in this case, we'll get 360 degrees minus 30 degrees. And that equals 330 degrees. And again, if you plug that into the original, that really does solve it. OK, but there's a little bit more here to the story. Now, if I come back to my unit circle and I add another 360 degrees to that, so 360 degrees plus 210 is like 570 degrees, um, that'll actually solve the equation as well. OK, so 2 times sine of 570 plus 1 is equal to 0. And if I add another 360, I'll get another solution. And again and again, I can actually add 360 degrees or subtract 360 degrees and get a coterminal angle out of that. And it'll work. So to take care of that situation, what we're going to do is add any multiple of 360 degrees. So 360 degrees times n, where n is an integer. OK, now we're going to have to do the same thing here with the 330 degrees. So let's go ahead and add 360 degrees n there. And so there we have infinitely many solutions co-terminating in quadrant 4. And then here we have infinitely many solutions co-terminating in quadrant 2. And that's how you solve a linear trigonometric equation.